Hi, my name is Fernando, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And I'm going to show you how to integrate GitLab security features with Jenkins. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use GitLab's application security capabilities with Jenkins CI. I'll go over creating a Jenkins job that integrates with GitLab and which can be called from the GitLab pipeline. I'll also go over showing how to stop the pipeline if any vulnerabilities are found within your security scans. This tutorial will be very useful if you are currently migrating from Jenkins to GitLab and want to know how to minimize impact while keeping your application as secure as possible. This tutorial will use a sample project linked in the description. This tutorial requires a self-hosted Jenkins instance as well as GitLab Gold or Ultimate. In your GitLab instance, you must create a personal access token in the access token section of the user settings and scope it to API. This will allow us to authenticate with the GitLab API through Jenkins. Make sure you save off the token for use in the later section. Now let's go to Jenkins and add the personal access token as a credential. Here we add the GitLab API token that we created earlier to Jenkins. That way Jenkins can communicate with GitLab. The scope should be set to global. The API token is the personal access token and we can add our own ID and description. Under Manage Jenkins, we can go ahead and manage the plugins which are installed in Jenkins. We will go ahead and install the GitLab plugin. This plugin allows GitLab to trigger Jenkins builds whenever code is published or a merge request is created. After selecting the GitLab plugin, click on Download Now and Install After Restart. This will go ahead and start installing the GitLab plugin. Now click on the Restart Jenkins when installation is complete and no jobs are running. Then we wait a few minutes for Jenkins to restart. Now let's go ahead and configure the GitLab plugin. Let's scroll down to the GitLab section. Here we create a GitLab connection name. We add the GitLab host URL and we set up credentials. This all enables the authentication to GitLab. Then just click save to save this configuration. Now we must set up a Jenkins user so that GitLab can call Jenkins and run a job from the GitLab pipeline. Create your own username and password, as well as an ID and description. Once we click OK, this will create a user. We will use this user in order to run the Jenkins job from GitLab. Now let's create a new item. Just enter a name, select Freestyle Project, and click OK. This creates a new Jenkins job which we can configure. Here we select the GitLab connection we created in the earlier section. We'll also set up SCM. Here we add the repository URL so that Jenkins can successfully clone it. We also add the credentials we created earlier. Since the job I'm creating needs access to the container registry, I'm going to store my container registry password as a secret text variable. Add the variable name where you want to store the actual secret text and click the add button. Select secret text. Just add the actual password under secret and you can also provide an ID and description. And click add to add it as an environment variable.
In the build stage, I execute a shell script which builds the container and pushes it to our container registry. Note that it uses the CI registry password that we created as a secret text. This Jenkins drop will be triggered by the GitLab pipeline, which I will show in a later section. We can add a post build section, which will display the result of the job at the end of its run. This creates an external job which points to the Jenkins build. It displays the status of the job as well as its console output. Then just press save to save the job. Now go over setting up the actual scripts which we'll call Jenkins from GitLab. Let's first take a look at the pipeline. In this GitLab pipeline, we have the build stage which calls the Jenkins job. Next, we run SAST from the GitLab template. Then there's the verify job, which checks if a vulnerability was detected in SAST. If a vulnerability was detected, it will block the pipeline from proceeding forward. If no vulnerabilities were detected, then we would move on to the deploy stage, which would call the Jenkins job for deployment. In this example, you can see that the deploy stage did not start because there was a vulnerability detected. The external job is generated showing the status of the Jenkins job once it has completed. Now I'll show you exactly how I created this pipeline. All the sample code is provided in the link in the description. Let's take a look at the GitLab CI.yaml. The build stage runs a Python script I created, which uses the Jenkins API to call the build job. Note that allow failure is set to false, meaning if the Jenkins job fails, we will not proceed in the pipeline. Here's the SAS security block job. This job checks if there is a vulnerability, and if there is, it blocks the pipeline from proceeding. It does this by scanning the GitLab SAS report generated by the SAS scanner. Note that different security scans may output different JSON, and this script will need to be tuned accordingly. SAS is run by simply just including the GitLab SAS template. The deploy stage calls the Jenkins deployment job using a similar script as the one found in the build stage. Here's an overview of the Python build script. It just uses the Jenkins API and credentials to start a Jenkins job. The Jenkins username and password are those we created earlier. It then pulls on that Jenkins job to see the status. When all the vulnerabilities are resolved, you can see that the pipeline is no longer blocked and continues running. When clicking on the external job, we go directly to the Jenkins job and we can see the output from the console. This is very useful for quickly determining what occurred during a build. You can see that the container was built and pushed successfully. Here's a few things we've gone over on GitLab Jenkins CI integration. Be sure to see the links in the description for sample projects and references. To keep up to date, check out about.gitlab.com and be sure to subscribe. At GitLab, everyone can contribute.